story number one. This story takes us back to 1987, in a small, rural town in the Midwest. The town's only hospital had been standing for decades, and over the years, the staff had heard their fair share of strange noises and unexplainable occurrences. But nothing compared to what was about to unfold. It all began with a series of mysterious deaths in the ICU. Patients, stable and recovering, would suddenly pass away in the middle of the night. There were no warning signs, no medical explanations, just dot 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 silence. Meet Zoe, a new nurse on the night shift. She had just started her career and was excited to be working in the hospital. But her excitement quickly turned to fear when she began noticing strange things happening during her shifts. At first, it was small things. Doors would open and close on their own. Equipment would malfunction without reason. But then, I started hearing voices. One night, Zoe was doing her rounds when she entered the room of an elderly patient who had been stable for weeks. But when she opened the door, she was met with a chilling sight. Zoe. She wasn't responding to me, just sitting there. I called her name, but nothing. Then, she turned her head and said something that sent chills down my spine. Patient, he's coming for you next. Shaken by the encounter, Zoe confided in one of the older nurses, hoping for an explanation. But instead, she got a warning. You've heard the stories, haven't you? About room 404, that room it's cursed. Every patient who stays there dies. The next night, Zoe's curiosity got the better of her. She found herself standing outside room 404. She knew the room was empty dot dot. Or at least, it was supposed to be. The second I stepped inside, I felt it. The temperature dropped, and it felt like something or someone was watching me. Despite the warnings and the terrifying experiences, Zoe couldn't shake the feeling that something was drawing her back to the hospital. She returned to work, but this time she wasn't alone. The footsteps they were getting closer, louder. I was frozen in place. Zoe wasn't imagining it. Something had followed her and it wasn't leaving. Zoe quit her job the next day, leaving behind the hospital and its secrets. But the stories didn't stop. Staff members continued to report strange occurrences and patients in room 404 kept dying under mysterious circumstances. Some say the hospital is haunted by the souls of those who died unjustly. Others believe it's something far worse. But one thing is certain, if you ever find yourself in room 404 you might not make it out. Have you ever had a creepy hospital experience? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more terrifying true stories. Story number two. In the early 2000s, there was a small, aging hospital located in the outskirts of a bustling city. Known for its outdated equipment and eerie reputation, it had trouble keeping staff especially those working the night shift. Tom had been working at this hospital for only a few weeks. He took the night shift to pay his bills while attending nursing school but he was about to find out that this hospital had more than just financial struggles. At first, it was nothing more than a faint whisper, barely audible. Tom dismissed it as the wind or an old ventilation system. But the sound grew louder. He stood up, trying to trace the source of the noise. It seemed to be coming from one of the patient rooms, room 209, a room that, to his knowledge, had been empty for days. What he didn't know was that room 209 had a history a dark one. Patients who stayed there never made it out alive. As the night wore on, things only got stranger. Footsteps echoed down the hallway, but no one ever appeared. Lights flickered, and equipment malfunctioned. Tom's heart raced, but he told himself it was just his imagination. It had to be. I tried to stay calm, but it was getting harder to explain. I felt like something was following me, watching me. But every time I looked, there was nothing. Later that night, things took a turn for the worse. Around 3.15 a.m., Tom was called to assist with a patient down the hall. What happened next was caught on the hospital's security cameras. What the footage revealed was chilling. A dark figure, almost human in shape, appeared to follow Tom down the hall. 
but Tom never saw it at least not yet. Shaken by the strange occurrences, Tom decided to finish his rounds quickly, but just as he thought the worst was over, something happened that would haunt him forever. He heard a faint tapping at the window. At first, he thought it was rain, but when he got closer, his blood ran cold dot in the reflection. He saw it. A pale, lifeless face, hovering inches behind him. He spun around, but the hallway was empty dot dot. The next day, Tom couldn't shake the feeling that something had attached itself to him. He confided in an older nurse, hoping for an explanation. But what she told him made his heart sink. You saw it, didn't you? The figure, we all have but we don't talk about it. It's the spirit of a patient who died here years ago in room 209. He never left. Tom never returned to that hospital after his shift ended. But the other staff still talk about room 209 and the strange occurrences that continue to plague the night shift. Who or what still haunts the halls of that old hospital remains a mystery. But one thing is clear. Not all spirits are ready to move on dot. Do you believe in hospital hauntings? Have you ever experienced something chilling during a night shift? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more real-life horror stories. Story number three. Hospitals can be eerie places, especially those with a history that's been forgotten. Tonight, we dive into a terrifying true story, a story of a hospital wing where something was left behind and it's been waiting ever since. This story takes place in the early 1990s at a large, regional hospital on the edge of town. The hospital was massive, with wings that stretched far and wide. But one section had been closed for years, the East Wing. Officially, it was being renovated. Unofficially, no one went near it. The East Wing was where the hospital first opened its doors back in the 1950s. It housed the ICU, the psychiatric ward, and long-term care patients. But after a series of tragic accidents and unexplained deaths, it was closed off indefinitely. Meet Sarah, a nurse who had just started working the night shift at the hospital. She had heard the rumors about the East Wing, but like most new staff, she didn't believe them. After all, the stories were old, and the wing had been sealed off for years. What could possibly be in there? Her first few weeks were uneventful until one night, just after midnight, when she heard something strange. It was a soft knocking sound, faint but distinct, coming from the direction of the East Wing. Against her better judgment, Sarah decided to investigate. After all, the wing had been locked for years, no one could possibly be inside right. To Sarah's shock, the door wasn't locked. The padlock had rested through, and with a gentle push, it swung open. What lay beyond was a long-forgotten corridor, filled with dust and decay. The air inside was cold and naturally so. The walls were cracked, the ceiling tiles hanging loose, and the smell of damp, stale air was overwhelming. But it wasn't the condition of the wing that unnerved her, it was the feeling that she wasn't alone. As Sarah reached the last room on the floor, she found something that made her blood run cold. The room was fully furnished, as if waiting for a patient who never left. And sitting in the corner of the room was an old hospital gown, draped over a chair, as if someone had just been there. I heard the shuffle of feet. Someone or something was moving behind me. But when I turned around, there was no one there. As she made her way back to the main hospital, she heard it. A voice, faint but clear, calling her name. Sarah froze, her heart pounding and then she saw it at the far end of the hall, a figure standing in the shadows. I didn't wait to find out who or what it was. I ran. I ran as fast as I could. Sarah never returned to the East Wing after that night. But the staff continued to report strange noises knocking, footsteps, and whispers that seemed to come from the sealed-off corridor. Some believe the East Wing is haunted by the spirits of the patients who died there, their restless souls unable to move on. Others say it's something far darker. But one thing is certain. Once you step into the forgotten wing, you may never come out the same dot do you believe in haunted hospitals. Have you ever had a paranormal experience while working the night shift? 
Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more terrifying true stories.